Today I'm gonna to share my process on how I painted this guy and what I used. So stay tuned and learn all about it next. My name is Paige, I'm the Chief Pixel Pusher and Paint Brusher over at Gumption. And today we're gonna to be exploring acrylic paint. I know I'm changing things up a little bit this week. Thought it might be fun to go through this process. So without further ado, let's get started. Every good painting starts with a sketch, and of course I start in Procreate. And here I'm showing you my Sorel transfer paper. I used Sorel transfer paper to transfer my sketch onto my panel, and I did it before I actually put anything on the panel. This is a raw panel from Trakel Panels, and I usually get them raw, and then I use shellac, a clear shellac, and put a couple coats of it down. And then I also used GAC 100 on top of that to seal in the panel. Next, I hit the gesso, and you can see here I'm using Liquitex clear gesso so I can see my pencil marks. I put down three coats of gesso. I alternate directions that I'm applying. And then once that's dry, I take a sanding block and sand down the top to smooth it out. And I recommend probably smoothing out the sides of the panel as well. Once this is done, I tone the canvas. And today you can see I'm kind of using this orangey color for a tone. Uh, I found that it saved me a lot of time this time painting this little guy so I recommend it so your colors can kind of stay on point and um, you're not too extreme and too light or too dark on either end of that spectrum. I use Trakel brushes mostly and golden paints for this and I'm not sponsored by either of these guys but if you were to buy paint brushes from Trakel I might get a little kickback. Then I took the hair dryer to it to dry that because I really wanted to get to painting. You'll see here I'm just laying down the local color or the main base color for these portions. It requires many layers to create an opaque background here unless you add white which I have done for this green area here. Here I'm just double checking my drawing and seeing where I may have covered up certain areas and defining the different shapes with the different colors. I had some light pencil marks and spots and I wanted to be able to really discern where things were supposed to go. I'm using a mixture of fluid acrylics and high flow acrylics and there you can mix them together without any problem. Using a little glazing fluid. I found things were drying pretty fast on me and so I was trying to slow down the process just a tad. I'm using my sketch for reference to make sure that I don't forget anything. And you can see here that the purple is still transparent. So that will require more layers or adding a little bit of white to that paint to really make it opaque. 
filling in the spaces and adding some of this green foliage in here really helps define your painting. Now you can really see that things are starting to happen. As you can see, I've created an opaque layer over the top of my octopus and I'll be glazing with deep purple to create shadows and form shadows. There's not much light under the ocean, but here I'm trying to create some sort of lighting situation with shading on the octopus and the fish. This is a snippet of a bigger project that I'm working on. I'm preparing for a big mural project and this is just a little snapshot of one of the parts of that bigger project. I'm excited about this upcoming project because it's very colorful and it has lots of animals and underwater life. It's been a total blast to create. Here you can see I'm adding a little bit of red to create a little dimension here on this octopus. Working the eye to create the correct depth there. Adding shadows into the underside of our octopus. A little attention to this guy, this little yellow fish. These guys might actually be lunch for the octopus. I'm not quite sure. You can make up your own mind about that. I felt like we needed a third fish and I had that in my sketch, but I didn't put it out when I first drew this out. One of my favorite color combinations is mixing this hot pink with a warm yellow. Just love the richness that you get with it. And of course, I love the hot pink. This is a fluorescent pink that Golden makes in their High Flow series. And I try to incorporate it in every painting that I do that is acrylic. What I really love about using the matte medium in paintings like this, if you've ever used golden acrylics, they're very glossy and shiny. And sometimes it's hard to see with the wrong kind of light and you get a lot of glare. And so that matte medium cuts glare, which really cuts down for me on my painting time. Here I'm adding a little quinacridone magenta to give us a little darker shade there. Continuing with these shadows and trying to give this guy depth.
And here I'm doing some glazing to darken the bases of these little plants. And I'm glazing the background a little to make it recede a little bit more. Now it's time for the bottom of those long tentacles. And I used a mixture of pearl and gold and a little bit of iridescent paint for these guys. They took a little longer than I thought they would. And then I decided to fill them in and I like that look a little bit better. With this painting, I just wanted to have fun and really enjoy the painting process. I feel like I'm always refining and improving my painting skills with acrylic. It's always been a more difficult medium for me and I really enjoyed this one. Lastly, I just did a layer of matte medium over the top and I imagine I'll be varnishing this painting as well with a matte varnish. And there you have it. That's my process for painting this underwater scene. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want access to more of my content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, keep painting, keep creating, and enjoying quarantine.